Hello and welcome to the video training course for the Classroom Game Server. In this series of videos, we'll be presenting an introduction on using the game server to teach with Minecraft EDU, the educational version of the incredibly popular game Minecraft. In this video, we'll be answering the question, what is Minecraft? Before we begin to learn how to play Minecraft, it's useful to give a quick overview of what exactly Minecraft is, what you can do in the game, how people are using Minecraft today, and how it can be used in the classroom. Minecraft is what's known as an open world sandbox game. By open world, we mean that the player is free to explore the game world as they please. What tasks and challenges the player faces, and when the player chooses to face them, is up to the player. By sandbox, we mean that the player has the ability to change the game's environment. Minecraft is often described as a massive virtual LEGO world. The entire game world is built out of blocks, and the player is put in the world and given the ability to build their own creations out of these blocks. Every time a player starts a new game in Minecraft, the world's features are randomly generated, so there's always space for exploration and discovery. Exactly how the player is allowed to play in the world depends on what game mode they are using. There are currently three game modes in Minecraft. Survival Mode, Creative Mode, and Minecraft EDU Mode. In Survival Mode, the player must gather blocks and other materials from their environment in order to use them in construction. So if the player wants to create a stone castle, for instance, they'll need to mine out a quarry first. Players can use the resources to craft a range of tools to improve their ability to gather resources, which in turn allows them to craft even better tools. Players in survival mode also have a health bar, which can be damaged by falling great heights, catching fire, or being attacked by monsters that come out at night. The penalties that a player faces upon losing all their health varies depending on the game's difficulty setting, but suffice it to say that death should be avoided. So what do people do in survival mode? Since this is an open world sandbox game, it's up to the players to come up with the goals, but what are some of the most popular things to do? Usually, the first step is to establish some basic survival needs, like shelter and food. From there, you can expand your home base, develop farms for more reliable food sources, build deeper mines to search for more valuable minerals, and craft more advanced tools. And of course, you can explore the virtually infinite world to discover mountains, jungles, deserts, tundras, and the sprawling, twisting networks of tunnels, caverns, and ravines just below the surface. The second game mode is Creative Mode. In Creative Mode, the player has access to an unlimited quantity of every block and item in the game. In addition, Creative Mode players can break any block instantly, are completely invincible, and have the ability to fly. So what do people do in Creative Mode? Build anything you can imagine. Castles, mansions, skyscrapers, entire towns, entire cities, pirate ships, spaceships, scale models of real world structures, the sky's the limit. A special game mode for Minecraft EDU, the aptly named Minecraft EDU mode is an in-between of survival mode and creative mode. It has all the normal features of survival mode, minus the health bar and hunger meter, making the players invincible. Minecraft EDU mode is great for lessons where you want to pose navigation and resource management challenges to the players, but don't want players worrying about dying in-game. Now that we have a basic understanding of how Minecraft works and how people play the game, we can start to see opportunities to use Minecraft as a powerful teaching tool. Whether you're working to build your character's basic needs in survival mode, or raising a super construction in creative mode, you're going to be more successful if you team up. Teachers have seen great improvements in cooperation, coordination, and communication between students as they naturally form a team. From basic multiplication and division, to probabilities, ratios, volumes, and more, math is constantly at work in Minecraft, especially when planning out a large construction project. Minecraft EDU's info signs allow teachers to easily create in-game stations where students can read whatever the teacher has written there. 
Having classroom reading and writing assignments tied to in-game events and missions drives students to have greater reading comprehension. Students can also use in-game journals to write assignment submissions and creative works. Many aspects of the process of planning and managing your team's town in Minecraft can be directly related to real-world city planning and civics. Over time, Minecraft societies create rules and building codes to create and manage individual and communal property. Player-created trading floors are not an uncommon sight in large multiplayer Minecraft worlds, which can open discussions on supply and demand, exchange rates, and currency. As students create their community in this virtual world, they can simulate different forms of government to better understand how these structures affect real-world society. Students can become much more engaged in history lessons if they're actually walking around historical landmarks and speaking with historical figures. Check out Eric Walker's World of Humanities for a fantastic example of how to teach history in Minecraft. Certain materials in Minecraft can carry an electric current, allowing teachers to demonstrate concepts of electricity and circuitry. You can even build logic gates in Minecraft, allowing you to teach the fundamentals of computer engineering. These are just a few examples to show how Minecraft's great advantage as an educational game is that it's not tied down to a single subject. The open world sandbox nature of the game means that teachers and curriculum developers can choose their own goals for the game and shape the game world to fit the needs of the lesson. And that's exactly what you'll be learning how to do in this video series.